We are back with the return of Pink Power today as we mark National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. In the days and weeks ahead, we're going to share with you the latest research and treatments and some personal stories of those in the fight. We do have a lot to get to this morning, including our packed plaza, lots of volunteers filling care packages for those with breast cancer. We'll talk to them in a little bit. But first, a look at where this fight stands. More than 200,000 Americans are diagnosed with breast cancer each year. The good news, more are surviving breast cancer thanks to better diagnostic tools, surgical techniques, and targeted therapies. Yet breast cancer will claim the lives of more than 40,000 women this year. It is the second only to lung cancer as the leading cause of cancer deaths in women in the United States. Early detection is key. The American Cancer Society recommends women ages 45 to 54 get mammograms to screen for cancer and encourages regular self-breast exams. It is a message tennis superstar Serena Williams is helping spread in a new public service announcement. Do I touch myself? Serena's voice is one of many joining the fight. Some of Hollywood's favorite actresses have battled breast cancer. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, the star of HBO's Veep and Seinfeld, shared her diagnosis last year on social media, saying, one in eight women get breast cancer. Today, I'm the one. She has shared her journey to help others. And Rita Wilson, actress, singer, songwriter, and wife of Tom Hanks, shared her diagnosis in 2015. Now cancer-free, she joins the fight against breast cancer by telling her story and spreading awareness in the battle of a disease that impacts so many. And we're so happy Rita Wilson is with us now. We should mention that you just released your third album, Bigger Picture. We're going to get to that a little later. But Rita, hi. Hi, Hoda. So it's been three years yep. uh, since you battled breast cancer. And I remember for me, I, I'm, I've been 10 years, but I remember the day I knew I was... Congratulations. Oh, thank you. The day I knew I was getting better was when it wasn't the first thing I thought of when I woke up in the morning. Yes. For you, is it is it still the number one thought? No, that diminishes. I think mm -hmm. when you are going through treatment, or you're getting your diagnosis, you are really, really focused on that. And then when things sort of ease off, yeah. I had a bit of a delayed reaction, and that's when I thought, what just happened to me? So uh, mindfulness meditation is so helpful to get through that period, and in time, it diminishes when you get uh, more years and under your belt of being clean. Yeah, and I think what's interesting about yours is you went in for a checkup. They said you were fine. You right. had a bad gut about yes. it. You said, this doesn't feel right. A friend encouraged you to go get the second opinion. That's yes. actually a good message. If you don't feel like they, they got it right, right, go back in. And it's not just a second opinion. It was a second opinion on my pathology, yeah. which I had never heard about. And my friend, Mary Flirty, who told mm -hmm. me, Said she was a breast cancer survivor twice, and she said, you should mm -hmm. go get a second opinion on your pathology. Right. And for that was critical because it came back that I did have breast cancer. What you touched on is important because I think once you're done with it, people are like, oh, good for you. You're all done yeah. with that. Yeah. And then later, I don't know, but you have feelings of like, is it coming back to get me? I, I, I escaped yes. it, but it might be back. So a little more detail on like how you battled that part. Um, I think mindfulness meditation yeah. was extremely helpful. Uh, time Time is extremely Time, yeah. helpful. Uh, doing things that you love, like music for me has been an incredible um way to just, mm -hmm. it's like therapeutic and at the same time a creatively satisfying outlet. So I would do things that are important to you and I would listen to music. Yeah. I would listen to music. What'd music you can change to? your mood. Anything yeah. and everything. Yeah. I, I mean, at that time I was doing a play with Larry David I here remember. called yeah. Fish in the Dark and Taylor Swift's album 1989 came out and I was listening to that. Mm -hmm. I was listening to a friend of mine's album, Jason Reeves. He's got a, a great album as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just getting the music that makes you feel good and puts you in a good space. I, I'm a scrapbook collector, at least I was, and photo albums, and I think sometimes as, as human beings, we forget or lose track of who we are, yeah. and so sometimes you look back at your scrapbooks or your life, and, and sometimes I can be incredibly happy and, and love everything I've seen, and sometimes I'm sad just from the people that we've lost and yeah. the people we love that we've lost. That well, you're going to be singing at, singing at the Grand Ole Opry, which is crazy. Yes. Congrats yes. to you on I'm making my debut. Something else that we've noticed, I mean, you, you talked about support is important. You had the support of, obviously, of, of Tom, your yes. awesome husband. And I couldn't help but looking, I was on Facebook or somewhere, and I saw a picture of 
your husband as Mr. Rogers, I was like, OMG, do you, what do you think of that look of his? Well, I, I, since I'm going to have to visit his neighborhood, um, I just hope that uh, he, he finds a place to store that look. <laughs> I mean, we all love Mr. Rogers, but let's face it. Rita, you are awesome. Thank you so much.